Hey everyone, today we're talking about binary. This video will be the first in a series involving binary. We'll talk about some more advanced topics like how floating point numbers are stored, um, how strings are stored, how binary logic works and logic gates and how that relates to binary. But today we're talking about what binary is, how do you convert from decimal to binary or binary to decimal, and what are some common shortcuts that can make it faster? Stick around to the end of the video if you want an update on my pet chickens. Okay, so the first question is, why bother with any of this? Why should you care about learning binary? Well, I just said I have a couple videos coming out, and you'll need to have binary to understand those. But also, the, the lofty goal is that binary is the foundation of everything in computing, whether it's logic or storing data, or communicating with another computer via the internet, it all boils down to binary. A more concrete reason is that it can help you understand the limitations of whatever programming language you work with. For example, in JavaScript, there are some weird quirks around numbers and how decimals work and precision issues, and there's minimum and maximum sizes for numbers. And if you understand binary, it gives you a window into why that actually happens. Why do we get this weird behavior? Also, some more specific reasons. Binary is taught in computer science classes. If you don't have a computer science degree, it's just a good thing to learn. And it could come up in a coding interview, although I think it's a horrible question to ask someone in a web developer interview, but that doesn't stop people. I saw somebody post on Quora saying, you can be a race car driver without being a mechanic or without understanding how your car actually works. You can still drive fine, but you'll be a more well-rounded driver if you can fix it or at least talk about it. Same thing with code. You don't need to know binary to be a great developer most of the time, but learning how it works can help you understand your code and your machine a lot better. So most of us in the modern world are used to base 10 numbers. The decimal system, what does that mean? It means that for each digit in a number that we write, we have 10 choices, zero through nine, the standard Arabic numerals, but there are many other number systems out there. The most often cited reason why we use base 10 in the modern world is that we have 10 fingers and that makes it easier or more natural to count and store numbers. As I mentioned, there are many other systems. We have binary where we have two choices for each digit, zero or one, or base 16 hexadecimal you might be familiar with from computing or from colors where we have 16 choices. We run out of numbers, so we use letters. A through F. But you have to remember all of those are just symbols. These are all base 10 systems here throughout history, th across the globe. But they all have different symbols for the same concepts. You could use emojis. It, it doesn't matter. So the actual digits aren't important. It's the number of digits. Here's a fun example. This is a formal Mayan base 20 system. I think it was mainly used for drawings and etchings on the sides of buildings. And there were 20 unique symbols for each digit. And apparently that came from the fact that we have 20 fingers and toes if you count them up. Early Californian and Mexican civilizations used a base eight system, apparently because there are eight spaces between our fingers. So they counted those spaces rather than the fingers. And here's a list of some other ones that are still used around the world. Base 12 in parts of Nigeria. And then we have Papua New Guinea, which has hundreds of different tribes and many of them have their own unique number systems and their own bases. Okay. We're in base 10, as we talked about. So a quick recap of how we count. You probably know this, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then what happens? We're out of digits. What do we do next? We go to 10. So what is 10? Well, it's just a combination of two of those digits. We saw two numbers together, two symbols. Remember, they could be anything, but what matters is their position in this number, right? This two on the left, is much more valuable, it's worth 10 times more than the two on the right. Even though they are the same symbol, they mean something different. Most of you are probably familiar with something like this from elementary school. The ones place, the tens place, the one hundreds place. Every digit here is worth 10 times its value. Every digit here is 100 times its value. So for 157, even though it's just three single digit numbers, the entire number means one times 100 plus five times 10 plus seven times one, which gives us 100 plus 50 plus seven, AKA 157. If we reduce that to a pattern, each place that we add on is a factor of 10 more valuable or larger than the previous place. So each digit in the first place has a value of 10 to the zero, AKA one, then we go to 10 to the first, which is 10, 10 to the second, 100, the thousands place, 
the 10,000th place, and so on. Now when we work with binary, we follow the exact same pattern. We just have a much smaller palette. We have two choices for each digit, 0 or 1, on or off, an electrical signal in the case of a transistor that is on or off. So instead of 10 to the 0 with, 10 to the 1st, 10 to the 2nd, each place is 2 to the something. 2 to the 0, which also is 1, anything to the 0 is 1. Then we have 2 to the 1st, 2, 2 squared, 4, 2 cubed is 8. So this means that our numbers are much, much longer. It takes way more digits to store the equivalent number from decimal, unless we're working with 0. So 0 in base 2 is the same as 0 in base 10. It's just 0. We have 0 and 1 as our choices. So for 0 and 1, we just write that number. But as soon as we get to 2, things get a little crazier. We now cannot store the value of 2 in a single digit. We can only store 0 or 1. So to store 2, we need 2 digits. So if you look at this table here, think of this 1 as a yes and 0 as a no. So we have yes, we have 1, 2 and we have zero ones. So you add that up, and that gives us two. To store three, it's one, one. We have yes for a two and yes for a one. You add it together, we get three. Four is going to be one, zero, zero. One, four plus zero, zero. So one, four is just four. Here we have five, four plus one. And six, four plus two, and no one. 7, 4 plus 2 plus 1, that gives us 7. And finally, 8. We've got 1, 8, and 0, 4, 0, 2s, and 0, 1s, so it's just 8. And you can see how much longer this is compared to the 8 in decimal, but they are equivalent in value. So here's a quick exercise. What is this number in base 10? Take this binary number, figure out what is the equivalent in decimal. All right, pause the video, and I'm back. The answer is 13. If you write out the powers here, we've got 2 to the third, which is 8. We have one of those. We have 2 squared, which is 4. We have one of those. 0 twos and 1, 1. 8 plus 4 plus 1 is 13. So we've already seen one basic way to go from binary to decimal. This would be the basic approach. You write out the powers of 2. If this is a number we're trying to convert, you write out the powers of 2 as long as you need one for each digit. So in our case, I could have stopped right here. And then whenever there's a 1 that corresponds to that power, you sum those digits together, and you skip over the zeros. So we would get 16 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1, which gives us 27. And this number right here, 11011, is 27 in binary. But there is a faster way. At least some people think this is faster. It's called the doubling method. So there are a couple of rules. Let's say we're trying to convert this binary number to decimal. So we keep track of a total, and it starts at 0. And then we move from the left to the right, so we start here, and we go this way. And for each digit, we multiply our total by 2, and then add this digit to our total. So we start with a total of 0, we multiply it by 2, which is still 0, and then we add this digit, which is 1. So our new total is 1. Then we multiply by 2 again and add this digit, which is also 1, which gives us 3. 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3. Now our total is 3, so we multiply it by 2 and add this digit, which is 0. So that gives us 6, 3 times 2 plus 0. And then we do it one more time. We multiply 6 times 2, which is 12, and we add 1, which gives us 13, which is the final answer. 1101 is 13 in binary. Now what about going the other way around, from decimal to binary? Let's say we have a number like this, 25. The naive, well, I shouldn't call it naive, the basic approach is to take your number and start by finding the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to your number. So 25, the largest power of 2 is going to be 16. If we go to 32, that's too big, we need 16. So then we take that and we subtract so what is 25 minus 16? That gives us 9. So now we have 9 left. If we're going to put a 1 here, and then we have the value of 9 that we need to spread across the remaining 4 digits. So what is the largest power of 2 that is less than or equal to 9? It is 8. There's just a difference of 1, right? 9 minus 8 is 1. So we'll put a 1 right here, 
and now we have a balance of one. Well, how do we store one? Technically, the largest power of two that is less than or equal to one is two to the zero, AKA one. Then we just fill in our number like this, one, one, zero, zero, one. So we add 16 plus eight plus one, and that is going to give us 25. So that's the simple approach. There is a shortcut, which is called the remainder method. Now this is definitely faster, at least for me. Uh, you just have to remember the rules. So each time we divide by two, then we note the quotient and the remainder. We continue dividing the quotient by two until we get a quotient of zero. And then we write the remainders in reverse order. So if that made no sense, let's walk through an example. If we want to find the equivalent of 19 in binary, we start with 19, we divide by two. How many times does two go into 19? Nine, nine times two is 18. So we have a remainder of one, and now we're working with nine. So how many times does two go into nine? Four times, we have a remainder of one. How many times does two go into four? Two times, remainder of zero. And now we have two. How many times does two go into two? It goes one time, remainder of zero. And then one more time, our quotient is one. We divide by two. Two goes into one zero times with a remainder of one. And then we read backwards, the magic part. One, zero, zero, one, one. That is 19 in binary. So that is another method if you prefer that. Honestly, you're probably not going to have to convert numbers to binary or from binary to decimal all that often, but it is important to just understand how it works. And that's kind of it for this video. So we saw binary, it's just a number system where you have two choices for each digit, one or zero. So hopefully by now you are one with binary, you have entered your machine and become this terrifying girl doll face. Okay, this is a little better. You're unleashing your binary superpower that doesn't actually give you any powers. But you've made the first step towards understanding how computers work. I will have future videos building on this topic to talk about how floating point numbers are stored, how strings and other things are stored, how Boolean logic works, logic gates. There's a lot of things to talk about where you need to have binary as a foundation. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, leave a comment for future suggestions for videos. And lastly, here's my promised chicken update. Here they are a week ago, still small and adorable. And now, just a week later, look at these monsters. Hey guys. All right, you want some treats? Here you go.